Hi, it's Rob Bryanton. Welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Uh, if you're watching this at tenthdimension.com slash chat, what you're watching is a pre-recorded video, uh, but if there is ta text scrolling underneath uh, uh, from the conversations that are happening in the room, I do check into that room from time to time, uh, so there's a good chance I'll see whatever you write. Uh, so please do feel, feel free to leave your comments there. Uh, there's lots of other places to chat too, though. Uh, on YouTube we have our own uh, animations. If you search for animations by Tenth Dim, that's 10THDIM, uh, you'll find them including uh, our popular 11 minute animation. Uh, there's also the Tenth Dimension Forum, tenthdimension.com slash forum, where a lot of people have interesting discussions and uh, it's all about just finding ways to connect these ideas together. Uh, today's entry is called the Flip Book Universe and uh, the idea of a flip book is interesting if you're thinking about that original 11 minute animation because one of the sounds that, uh, that we hear a number of times in that animation is kind of like when somebody is riffling through a, a deck of cards. A and what that's trying to convey is the idea that a lot of the things that we think are continuous are actually created by tiny little pieces uh, which uh, in quantum physics are called quanta. So uh, today's entry, the flip book, flip book universe. The flip book universe analogy says that our space-time universe is being created one Planck frame at a time. Without this change from frame to frame, I would say we revert back to the information side of the information equals reality equation. If you type information equals reality into Google, you'll find more about that idea. It also relates to the field of digital physics, which we, we discussed last time. Modern theories of cosmology, like loop quantum gravity, are based upon this same idea. What we experience as time, even though it feels continuous to us, is actually granular or quantized in nature. The additional layer that I've added to this idea is that our 4D space-time is actually being created from probability sets that exist within the fifth dimension, which is where Kaluza proved and Einstein eventually agreed that the field equations for gravity and light for our universe can be united. The string theory concept of the higher dimensions being curled up down at the Planck length from our 4D perspective can then also be easily incorporated into this way of visualizing reality. Here's a phrase I coined years ago, which I've used in my book and the Tenth Dimension Forum and this blog. That which ceases to change ceases to exist. If something is in this set of pages from our flip book universe, then stops being in the probabilistic set of, of upcoming pages, it has ceased to change and ceases being part of our observed timeline. It ceases to exist. That's true whether you're talking about a rock, a planet, a person, or a gene or a meme. And by the time you start to imagine genes and memes within the context of the Omniverse, you're thinking about something very big indeed. Last blog, we reviewed some of physicist John Wheeler's ideas about how living creatures or quantum observers might actually have fine-tuned indeterminate parts of the initial conditions of the universe through a reverse causal effect. A challenging idea that takes some getting used to. Dr. Wheeler passed away just a few days ago, but as a respected and visionary leader of the physics community, his ideas will live on for years to come. There are three ideas from Imagining the Tenth Dimension that I would, I would like to touch on right now. First, as per Everett's Many Worlds interpretation, multiple timelines exist from this moment forward. Those timelines are not random, they are based upon probabilistic wave functions. But our free will is part of what creates which timeline each of us ends up traveling upon. 2. As per Feynman's sum over histories or sum over paths, there are also probabilistic branches that we could have traveled upon to get to this moment in time. And while sum over paths tells us there is only one path that is the most likely, that may not be the path that was actually taken. Since the Oxford team, under the direction of Dr. David Deutsch, have proved this branching parallel universes concept is just as true at the macro level as it is at the quantum level, this should mean there is more than one way any one of us might have been able to get to this moment in time. 3. John Wheeler encouraged us to think of the two above ideas in the really big picture. Not only are we creating our future, but we might also be able to fine-tune our past. This is not to say that my free will can allow me to jump to the parallel universe where it's the end of April 2008 and John Wheeler is still alive, but 
is to imply that there might be other subtle ways that we can each change our trajectories as we twist and turn in the fifth dimension, creating our flip book universe, one plank length at a time. And a particular future might become more probabilistically likely if we were to fine tune our past through the quantum observer processes John Wheeler was suggesting. That's all for today. From Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog, this is Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.